Hi, this is Needlepointers.com and today I'd like to show you how to embroider on a tote bag that you purchased from the store. For this project you'll need some pre-made tote bags and some tear-away or cutaway stabilizer and the pattern that you would like to embroider on your tote bag. The patterns I'm embroidering on my tote bags are from Designs by Juju and if you're interested in seeing more photos of this project or to get the Designs by Juju patterns or other supplies, these tote bags for example, please click the iCard or the link in the description of this video to visit our website needlepointers.com. By visiting our website and purchasing supplies through our links you can help us keep making more videos. The first step in this project is to remove the side seam from the bag. The reasoning for this is, is that you, when you're embroidering, unless you're embroidering a very small embroidery on here, the hoops are too big to be able to uh, hoop the, pad, the, the bag and you'd have to also flip this bag around and make it so that the whole bottom is available to be embroidered on without the back, the bag back underneath. And these bags are not big enough to, to, to turn them like that and to allow the embroidery to happen. The other thing is, is that the pattern I want to embroider on this is large, so large that it goes in my large hoop, which is 7 inches by 14 inches. So this is way too big to hoop the back. So what I'll do is I'm going to remove the side seam, one of the side seams from the bag so that I can then flip the back out of the way of the bag. And then we'll sew the bag back together after we're done the embroidery. So to do this, I'm going to basically turn the bag inside out and then using my seam ripper I will remove the stitching that. So I'll be back in a few after I've gotten this all removed. As you can see I now have the side seam taken out of the bag. I've also turned the bag inside out and I've hooped some tearaway stabilizer in my big hoop. You can also use cutaway sta stabilizer if you'd prefer. If your pattern is really dense then you would want to use cutaway. My next thing is is I'm going to float the bag on top of the hoop because it's not big enough to hoop. To do this I found that my bag is pretty much the size of my hoop so I want to have it centered on my hoop and in the so that when I stitch the design on here it will stitch in the location I want it on the bag and I want it to be just below a little bit below the top of the bag and centered side to side so I'm just since my bag is the size of this hoop I can just line it up on the sides and make sure that it's straight then I want to use spray adhesive to hold the bag in place until it's you know we start to embroider. So I'm going to push back the bag and don't spray too much spray adhesive because I found that if you get puddling it will actually make the bag to be wet and then that doesn't really come out. So use a small amount of spray adhesive and then place your bag down and then I'm going to do the other side so now it's, it's kind of held in place, it's being held down so in order to keep this out of the way while I'm stitching I don't want it to get caught up in the design I'm rolling this up a bit and I'm going to use these little Coulter's clips that I have 
and I'm going to clip it to the actually to the stabilizer that's sticking out of the top of my hoop. So now I have a nice clear area where my sewing machine can move around and can stitch. Now I have the project hooped and in at the machine. And I'm going to start stitching my first stitch, but usually it's best to figure out to make sure where the stitching is going to end up. And my machine has this pattern that will go around the whole area so you can see if you have everything out of the way. And I do, but I'll have to keep an eye when it's stitching along closer to the bottom here. So I'm going to start the first color. And I'll be back in a bit. So as you can see we have the whole thing embroidered and it's ready to come out. So I'll bring this out and show the next step. So next what we'll have to do is re-sew this uh, side seam. And so I'm going to just pin uh, along this edge with the right sides together. So for the first step I'm going to sew a straight seam and with a quarter inch seam. I've also threaded my machine with uh, purple thread which matches the bag color, the bag thread color. So the next step is to put a, to finish this edge because it, this is going to be exposed inside the bag and we don't want it to fray. This kind of material frays very easily so we want to make sure it's finished sort of like the other side. So I've picked my overlock seam. If you don't have an overlock seam on your machine, overlock stitch on your machine, then you can use a simple zigzag and just zigzag over the edge. This stitch goes back and forth and it's more like an overlocking stitch that you would see on the other side. Okay, I've cleaned up the top edge, folded it down, and I've pinned it right where the seam is to hold it in place better. So next I'm going to start top stitching where I stuck a little bit past where I pulled out the stitches. Don't forget to back stitch. And I'm just going to do the top stitch all the way down to where I stopped pulling out the stitches. And Finally, I'm going to stitch along the bottom side of this. Okay, so finally we just turn the bag right side out. And you can see there's the stitching is repaired along here. So now we have the finished tote bag. I hope you enjoyed this project. You can keep up with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel and by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, or Google+. Visit our website by clicking the i-card to find the links to follow us. If you're on Pinterest, pin our projects to the, your wall. This is a great way to keep track of your favorite projects. Visit our website, needlepointers.com, to find lots of other machine embroidery projects and tutorials. <music>